go down to the reports again and then i'm just gonna type in up top to find it that's how i usually find the statement of cash flows statement of cash flows there it is that's the one we want let's change the range up top we're going from 010122 to 123122 and run it there we have it the statement of cash flows now when you're thinking about the financial reports oftentimes we'll list the statement of cash flows as one of the major financial statement reports so you got the balance sheet you got the income statement you've got the statement of cash flows the reason we don't open it up every time we do the data input as we do with the balance sheet and the income statement is because you can kind of think of the statement of cash flows if you were to construct this by hand as being constructed after you build the balance sheet and the income statement. So in other words, if I go back to the balance sheet, when we first set up our system, we're going to lay down the chart of accounts. Then we're going to hit the plus button and we're going to enter these journal entries in the format of forms that then create the journal entries. These will have an impact on at least two accounts on the balance sheet or the in and the income statement. And that is going to be keeping us in balance with the double entry accounting system. And it's nice to then go to the balance sheet and income statement, drill down on the accounts affected to get back to the source document. So I would think of these as our major two financial statement reports being constructed directly from the data input. Then we're going to use this information or the system uses this information to create the statement of cash flows, which shows activity, what happens over time in a similar fashion as the income statement you'll note on a cash flow type of basis. Now, note that you might be thinking, well, what if I have my books, my balance sheet, and my income statement on a cash flow basis? Is the statement of cash flows redundant? Not necessarily, because even if you're on a cash flow basis, then like your small business, let's say that's on a cash flow basis and you're doing your books primarily to get your, uh, to get your tax returns done at the end of the year or something like that, there's still some components that are gonna be accrual based so if you have, for example, fixed assets, the tax code, even though it might be on a cash-based system or you might be recording on a cash-based system, will force you to put assets on the books and then depreciate them. That's an accrual type of thing. If you deal with accounts receivable, uh, then you're going to have, that's an accrual account in and of itself. You're on an accrual system. And so there's going to be differences between cash flow and, and a, a accrual basis. And then... Same with the accounts payable. And then if you've got any kind of prepayments, then also those are gonna be accrual kind of items. The reason the accrual system is, is required oftentimes if you're publicly traded, for example, and is considered the go-to for reporting purposes and projection purposes is if we go on the income statement, it's often easiest to see that if you were to compare multiple periods, if I hit the drop down here and say we wanna compare like quarters, let's say, and if I was to run multiple quarters here and do a comparison of these last two quarters, uh, let's do it this way. Let's go, let's go back to the totals. Let's run it. I'm going to go up here and let's just do, let's do one month. So let's go 12, uh, let's go one, two, two to 12, 31, two, two, run it. And then I'm doing a comparison to the previous month and do a dollar change on it. So I'm going to run it. So if I was trying to think, how did I do on December versus November, then I, I would have distorted numbers if I recorded, say, a purchase of a building in December for $100,000. Then there would be a complete distortion of my comparison. And it's not really fair to do that uh, from one perspective, because you'd be saying, hey, look, even though I bought the building in December, let's say, uh, or let's say I bought it in November, even if I bought it in November, I'm still going to be using it in December. And that's the idea of an accrual. So we're going to say to be fair to the two months so that I have a comparable amount of data, if I buy something that's going to have an impact on multiple periods into the future, I want to put it on the books as an asset and then, you know, depreciate it, record the expense when I actually consume it. So I have more comparable data. Now, in principle, that's a great concept it allows us to have comparisons more accurately but we also want to have a cash flow statement so now I'm, i've lost my income statement is not on a cash flow basis well now i can add on and have the best of both worlds in essence 
a statement of cash flows. But the statement of cash flows is a little bit tricky because now I'm going to have to kind of take what I did on an accrual basis and basically adjust it to a cash flow basis.